It's great for us as a family to be back home at Shakaina. We have been here several times and every time we came here and spent time in God's presence at the service and also with Pastor Joe Sweet and dear Sister Melinda, we have had wonderful transforming experiences and a great encouraging spirit coming upon us. So we come here with a selfish motive to be blessed. And I'm so thankful to you, Pastor, and the church for praying for us. Amen. We have 1.4 billion people in our nation. And our heart burns for them. We have so many people coming to the public crusades that we hold. 500,000 and millions being touched through media. But what is it? compared to 1.4 billion people. It's just a drop in the ocean. Every time we have these crowds at the crusade and we see the power of God, miracles happening, 500,000 raising their hands and acknowledging Jesus as Lord, at the end of the service, when we are driving back to the hotel, we see the crowds on the road. We see the crowds li lined up before the alcohol selling shop, wine shop, our heart burns. Why didn't these people come? Why didn't these people come to be delivered from Jesus? Our heart burns. So much more has to be done. So much more. Of course, on one side, there is tribulation, there is affliction, but it is then we see the greater working of the power of God greater power of Jesus being revealed and greater compassion flowing out of us and greater humility coming to us saying we are nothing but for Jesus. And that's the story of the ministry. And for all this, we need prayers. And thank you for praying for us every morning. Someone watched your leading the prayers for us online. They said, the whole church is praying for you. Look at Pastor Joe Sweet leading the prayer for you in India. And that's circulating everywhere. So you're all going around the world from here. So thank God for this wonderful fellowship. And thank you for faithfully supporting our ministry in the United States. We have a prayer tower in Dallas. We get about 10,000 calls every month and we have prayer intercessors praying for them from all nationalities all languages but thank god jesus is the same yesterday today and forever and he's been gracious to answer the prayers and your mission support goes to bless this mission through for this nation as well as for india and we also have 14 other prayer towers in 14 different, 11 different countries around the world praying for the people. Jesus appeared to my father 60 years ago and spoke to him face to face. And he said, my son, this world has heard about my love, but it has not seen my love through a human being. Today, I am removing your hard heart the hard heart of a man, selfish heart, and I'm giving you the heart of love, my love, my compassion, which was moved when I saw the multitudes, and I healed every one of them. I fed every one of them, and I raised the dead, forgave their sins. This love, this compassion is what the world needs. And multitudes will come to receive me as Lord. And today I'm giving you this heart of love and compassion. And ever since we have seen this grace flowing for 60 years. And that's our mission. To bring the love of Jesus. To care for the poor 
through an organization called Sisha and to preach the gospel and pray for the people 24 hours through the prayer towers, through the telephone prayer towers, and through these public meetings, through the media, praying for them so that they understand the love of Jesus, receive miracles, and then come to Jesus. But when the people come to Jesus, they say, we heard about Jesus for the first time. Of course, we have gone to many, many places. We have seen miracles. We have seen astrology. We have seen divination. But none of them gave us peace. Only Jesus gave us peace. Only Jesus gave us peace. And that's why we have come to follow him. 80% of those who come to these meetings are people who are not Christians, who have never known anything about Jesus. Everybody needs the love of Jesus. And that's the only solution for human beings in this world. The love of Jesus. And you are with us in this mission to bring the love of Jesus to millions. To clothe the naked. To build houses for the poor. To feed the hungry. And to preach the gospel. Which is the only solution for every person to live in this world. So God will bless you a hundred times. So today we have come <clears throat> to pray God's blessings upon you, upon your families. For whatever you have sown, our prayer this morning is that you will reap a hundred times from today. From today, you have sown in tears. For the tears of millions to be wiped away. May the blessings received by these millions come upon every one of you, your family members, from generation to generation. In the name of Jesus, Father, listen to this little prayer, Lord, and compensate for whatever thy children have done for you, Lord. Not only Jesus calls, they have stood carrying many ministries. They have been on their knees, crying out for many ministries, Lord, whom they have never even known. Today I pray that you will repay them. Let this be a day of repayment, Lord. Hundred times repayment. Hundred times reward. Let all their sorrows go. Let all their pains go. Let all their battles end, Lord. End, Lord. End, Lord. Please, please, please. Make us happy, Lord. We want to hear miracles from every one of them even before we leave, Lord. When they go home, they must see total transformations. They must see miracles. They must see an increase. They must see health and healing, Lord. And they must see every promise that you have given them fulfilled. And help them to walk in heavenly places. As princes and princesses of the living God. Thank you for this honor that is coming upon everybody. Your honor is coming upon everybody right now. Mahiram Labaha Shal Karani Yalbarani Mahasati Laraba Mahali Manasanti Laraba My children, you have been an aroma to me. You continue to be an aroma to me. The angels who are around you always rejoice over you because you have been patient. You have waited for me patiently. Never once you have asked the question, why? You have always said, let my Lord's will be done. He knows what is best for me. I love you for it, my children. Today, I anoint you with my love. I anoint you with my compassion. And I bring healing to your bones. I bring healing to your spirits. I bring healing to your minds. I'm giving you rest, my children. You have labored hard in the spirit. You have labored hard in life. But today, 
I'm bestowing my rest. I'm giving you rest. Rest in my bosom. Rest in my bosom. Rest in my bosom. Everything that has afflicted you, afflicted your children, I'm commanding them to leave right now. Your battles are over. I am giving you rest. My healing presence is flowing into you now. Whatever you have believed, I am making you experience it right now. Enjoy me. Enjoy me, my children. I am with you always. Surely I will increase your family. I will raise each one and give you a great name. Because I have given you my name, which is greater than every name. You have acknowledged it. And do you know your name is knit with my name? So you will have a great name. I bless you today. I'm giving you elevation after elevation. Promotion after promotion. Increase after increase. Supernatural experience after experience. I bless you today because you've been faithful. Your heart is clean. Your mouth is clean. Surely the prophecies that I have spoken through you will come to pass for this nation. I will surely bring integrity and peace to this nation. And there will be a great increase. My name will be honored again. My name and my love will be honored again. And I will open doors, wide open doors, for my name to be honored. I bless you for proclaiming this over this nation. I love you and I love your nation. You are mine. I am with you always says the Lord Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you. Daddy, who else we do we have other than you, Lord? We have no one else, Lord. We kiss your feet and we worship you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Thank you for choosing each one who is here. You have chosen them, calling them by name, O oh God. Kissing them and blessing them for following you as your own son, your own daughter. I thank you for loving them, Lord. Even this morning, Lord, we pray that you will speak to us. Reveal yourself to us through the word of God. Reveal yourself. I humble myself, cleanse me, and make me worthy to proclaim your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lancaster is hot. 
this morning I was wondering, is this India or Lancaster? <laughs> what a connection. Spiritual connection and climatic con connection. Yeah. Los Angeles was not so hot. Lancaster is hot. I think spiritually hot and physically hot too. <laughs> wow. Praise God. So I have to have some water. Excuse me. This morning, I would like to share with you the promise that the Lord gave me for this year, 2024. It's found in Isaiah 58 and verse 14. Isaiah 58 and verse 14. The Lord promises this. I will cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land. Would you say, on the heights of the land? I will cause you to feed on the inheritance of your father. You will find your joy in the Lord. Amen. Not in the world, but you will find your joy, your joy in the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This year, the Lord told me, it's going to be a year of elevation. God is going to take you to high places. You won't rejoice until I have finished this sermon. All that happens in the high places. So, here the Lord says, I will cause you to ride in triumph, in triumph on the heights of the land. I will cause you to triumph with the inheritance of your father. I will cause you to triumph with the joy of the Lord. So God wants us to triumph. So today he's going to teach us as to how we could triumph. Triumph in the heights of the land. So what do you have in the heights of the land? What do you have in the heights? If you read Ephesians 6 and verse 12. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. What is there in the high places? Spiritual wickedness. Dark powers of this world. So that's what is in the high places. Of course, this is what you see in the King James Version. The other, play, other versions say it's heavenly places. But this is high places. So even the heavenly places, Satan was walking and complaining about Job. I don't know why God gives him access in the heavenly places. He's supposed to be in hell. But he's an accuser. And Revelation 10, 11 and 12 says, he's the accuser of the brethren. But then he falls from the highest place. There was a loud noise. And the accuser of the brethren fell from the highest place. And Luke 10, 18, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall from the heavens. I saw Satan fall from the heavens. Heavenly places, high places. Satan is there. God has allowed it. You can't escape him. Go to hell, he's there. Get into the world, he's there. Go to heavenly places, he's still there. It's a mystery. And his job is to accuse the brethren. Accuse the brethren. Accuse the brethren. If there is an accusation rising up in your heart concerning somebody, you can very well know it's Satan. Yes. Cast out the devil. <coughs> Who are we to judge? <coughs> Sorry. Who are we to judge anybody? Our job is to love everybody. That's the heart of Jesus. So, he sits in heavenly places. Spiritual places wickedness. And that's why the Bible says in Isaiah 32 and verse 15, 
the Spirit will be poured upon us from on high. From on high. The only solution for the spiritual wickedness to get out from our lives in high places is the Spirit to be poured upon us in the heavenly places, in the high places. That's why Jesus said, wait for my Spirit. Wait. And the Holy Spirit came. And the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they overcame. And if you read Job chapter 25 and verse 2, the Bible says, God is sitting in the high places, in the heavenly places, and producing peace. Producing peace. Producing peace. Satan is sitting in the heavenly places and producing accusations. 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 Accusations through people against people. Accusation through the government against God's people. Accusation even in the heart of the believers. You're not good enough. You're not prayed enough. You're not given enough. He doesn't make us believe in the mercy of God. He says, you have failed God. Paul, every time I go to preach, he'll say, Paul, there's something wrong in you. When you go up and preach there to the 400,000 people, God may not listen to your prayer. He may not do miracles today. And people will accuse you. This is what the devil will speak each time. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is putting this in my heart. So every time I climb up the platform or get ready to climb up the platform to stand up and preach to the millions of people, half a million people, and then that's taken live to many more millions of people online through television and so on, translated in different languages so that the nation can be saved. So, just before that, before I put the step on the platform, somebody would come running and say, my daughter is dying of cancer in the hospital. You know, I can easily say 400,000 people are waiting because they'll say, your name is announced, come to the platform. But then it's a test. So, I would wait, pray for that girl as if I am praying for 400,000 people. Fight for her life. Fight for her life. Then the love of God will fill my heart for the 400,000 people. When I am faithful with one person, one person, to break the power of the accuser, nobody can accuse a servant of God, a child of God, because the spirit of love is being poured by the heavenly father in our hearts. In our hearts. He says, let the 400,000 wait. Look at this one girl who is dying. Not even one soul should be lost. Not even one soul should be lost. And once when I was about to speak, the Holy Spirit told me, Paul, this is not your platform. Yeah, this is not your platform. You're not standing on your platform. Not on your name. Thousands of people have been killed for the sake of the gospel in this city. They have died as martyrs. Many of them have not seen even one soul saved. The modesty of their women were outraged for the sake of the gospel. They died in hunger. They never saw even one soul saved. You are standing on their blood. Even you, my dear friends, when you are supporting God's ministry, missionaries, I know how much sacrifice you make to give that one dollar, or to give that ten dollars, or to give that hundred dollars. How much sacrifice? You are a martyr. God writes your name in the book of martyrs. The Lord told me, honor them. Honor them. Humble yourself before them. So in every meeting, 
the state would put their police cameras before me because if there's any problem because I spoke something which has offended somebody I can be in trouble but with all the cameras I would stand up and ask the whole crowd to stand up 400,000 to stand up and tell them somebody has died for you to come to Jesus Christ their blood is crying out to Jesus for you to be saved for you to be healed for you to find the love of Jesus let's honor them and I would say the first martyr is Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ so let's honor him and as we would honor him the Spirit of God would be poured from on high he would take over Paul the Nakran would disappear the accusations of the devil will disappear and the joy of the Lord will fill my heart because I'd be with Jesus with his love with his love that he carries for the 400,000 people I'd feel every one of them is my responsibility getting that lady out of debt is my responsibility Getting that man out of his alcoholic addiction is my responsibility. And the love of God which Jesus produces on, in the heavens, in the high places, would fill my heart. Would fill my heart. And we would fight for every soul. And everyone will feel, he spoke to me. He called my name. He prayed for me. And everyone will have Jesus blessing them blessing them yes my friend spiritual wickedness in high places but thank God he gives us triumph in high places through the spirit of love through the spirit of love that the Lord pours in our hearts and we shall be more than a conqueror how did Jesus overcome the spiritual wickedness in high places. The moment he was called into the ministry, in Matthew 4, starting from verse 1, the Bible says, The Holy Spirit led him into the desert for him to be tempted by the devil. He was taken to the high place of the devil first. Before he could minister to the millions of people or thousands of people. Of course, all the souls that we win for Jesus today is all in the list of Jesus. Through us, he is doing it. Thank, thank you, Jesus. So it must be billions and billions. So he was taken to the high place before he could start his ministry. And if you read Matthew 4, verse 5 and 6. Matthew 4, verse 5 and 6. Then the devil took Jesus to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Not in the temple, but the highest point in the temple. At Jerusalem, the Jewish temple. And he said, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For angels will lift you up in their hands. And your foot will not strike a stone. He took him to the highest point. For Jesus to prove himself that he is the son of God. That was the first temptation, first trial that Satan brought. Why does he take us to a high point? He says, prove that you are a child of God. Prove that you are a son, son of God. Prove that you are the daughter of God. Prove that you are the servant of God. You need to show a sign. Come on, jump from the top. God has said that the angels will protect you. He believes in the scriptures more than you and me. At least he shows that he believes. Because it is by the word of God we drive devils. But yet, 
he quotes those words for us to fail in high places. And that's the temptation that is before us even today. Show a sign. Show a sign that you are the son of God. You are the daughter of God. You know, every time we as evangelists would go to the platform, we would like to see signs, wonders and miracles. We want to see the lame walk. We want to see the deaf hear. We want to see the blind see. And then we ourselves will say, only then people will believe that I am a servant of God. And then they will believe in Jesus. Then they will believe in Jesus. But in some places in my 44 years of ministry, I have seen the power of God will be great when I would preach the message. I'd pray, but not even one testimony will come to the platform. Not even one person would come and testify. And I would go back and sit in my chair, especially during my younger part of my life. I'd say, Lord, why did you fail me? Why did you fail me? All these people are making fun of me now, saying, this man is not a man of God. No miracle happened. No miracle happened. God hides what he does. But I have seen the greatest miracles would have happened that night. And people would be reporting those miracles later on. Our camera crew would have filmed so many miracles. But he never allowed even one person to come to the platform. But he got every one of those people saved. <laughs> Salvation is the greatest miracle. And I have seen reports coming from those meetings that people had been sanctified, saved, and have become servants of God. I would see great churches rising up in that city. 5,000, 10,000 people. And they would invite me for their anniversaries or to inaugurate the churches, <clears throat> church buildings. And the pastor would rise up and give a testimony saying, I was saved in that meeting in this city when Brother Paul, Dr. Paul came to this meeting. <clears throat> I would wonder, no miracle happened in that meeting. But today this church has been built and established with 10,000 people. And I have the joy of opening the church. We don't need to prove that we are the servants of the living God. It is God's business. It is God's business. He knows how to prove that we are the servants of the living God. Jesus said, Yes, I will not allow myself to prove that I am the Son of God. I will not allow it. I will not allow you to put the Lord to the test. But I will show you a sign. In John 6 and verse 30, Jesus said, These people are asking for a sign for me to prove myself that I am the Son of God. No sign will be shown to them except for the sign of Jonah. Except for the sign of manna from heaven. I am the bread of life. The only sign is I will die. I will go to the cross. I will give my life for the salvation of the whole world. Those who are now and those who are to be. And I will rise up on the third day. That's the only sign. Christ crucified and risen. Today is the only sign for every one of us. Only sign for every one of us. Of course, God has called us for miracles. But I know there are some people who are discouraged because you have not seen miracles. You have not seen miracles in your personal lives. You have seen your mommy die 
with sickness. There are so many who have left the presence of God, left Jesus, because they didn't see a miracle. They didn't see a sign. But the only sign given to us, the sure sign, of course God does miracles. Of course God raises the dead. Of course God heals. But the only sign that the Lord wants us to look to is Jesus crucified. Yeah. And Jesus resurrected. And Jesus alive. And Jesus coming back again. And for that, for us to live a sanctified life. To go with him when he comes. That's the only sign. He said, this is the sign that I will give you. Just take up your cross. Deny yourself daily. And follow me. Luke 9, 23. This is the sign for every one of us. And this is the sign. As we follow, Satan falls as lightning from our lives. Amen. Amen. Satan falls as lightning. Amen. He can never touch us. We shall follow Jesus. As an old chorus, shall we all sing together? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. This is even better. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back. No turning back. What is your sign? The cross. the cross of Jesus. And the resurrection of Jesus. That makes Satan fall as lightning. Jesus said in John 2, 19. Destroy this temple. I will raise it in three days. Destroy this temple. I will show you that I am the Son of God, the daughter of the living God. Whatever you may do, Satan, to destroy me, my life, my family, yet I will rise up. Because the cross is alive. The Lord of the cross is alive. The Lord of the cross is alive. The Lord of the cross is alive. It may look my ministry is dead, my business is dead, my family is dead, my life is dead, my spiritual walk is dead. Yet I will rise up. Amen. Yet I will rise up. Because Jesus is my sign. Jesus is my only sign. Before every project that the Lord gives us, He allows us to go through the cross. He would say, Son, go to this city and preach the gospel. And 400,000 people would be expected. The grounds would be prepared. The government permissions would be sought. The networks would be contacted and so on. But before that, we would be afflicted. So that we are humbled to the dust. In 1969, several years ago, nearly 55 years ago, when Jesus told my father, my son, I'm going to use you mightily in the healing ministry. You know the first thing that happened for him when he was 34 years old, his lungs failed. And he began to vomit blood, throw up blood, and he was about to die. And those days he believed that persons who follow Jesus should not take medicines. So he believed in faith healing. So he never took medicines. He never went to a doctor. And he was dying. At the last moment, when he was about to die, Jesus came. I don't know why Jesus comes only at the last moment. 
who waited for the boats to be circling and circling and circling. And he went on praying as if nothing was happening. Several hours later, he walked on the water. He takes the shortest route. He walked on the water. He got into the boat. It was all silent after that. That's all it takes. And the Lord said, my son, I know you're suffering. I am also suffering with you. I am also crying with you. Your pain is my pain. But my son, only when you go through the suffering, you will understand the agony of suffering caused by sickness in the lives of the people for whom you're going to pray. Otherwise you will say, are you sick? You don't have faith. Are you sick? You have committed sin. And you will send them back without a miracle. But now you will not do that. Because you have been there. You have been there. Now you will fight for them. You will cry for them. You will feel as if you are suffering. Their pain will come upon you. And when two agree, you with your pain and they with their pain agree in the name of Jesus, it shall be done by your heavenly Father. <coughs> and God raised him up. Of course, he taught him a few other things. But God raised him up. And millions have been healed. And it never stopped with him. He went to be with the Lord in 2008, 16 years before. But the grace continues from generation to generation. From generation to generation. The grace that is upon you shall continue from generation to generation. Do not be afraid. When my father passed away, I saw one million people passing by his coffin. The leaders of the government, the judges of the Supreme Court, the actors, the political party leaders, the Christians, the non-Christians, everybody came and cried. And they said, Father, 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 who else is there for us? It was then I realized ministry is not just preaching or teaching or bringing miracles to the people or feeding the poor. It is being a father to the people. It is being a father to the people. I said, Lord, who can carry these millions whom my father was carrying? I cried 23 days. I could not sleep. I could not sleep. My wife knows. I kneel in the hall and cry. Who can carry these millions now? They should not backslide. They should not backslide. And after 23 days... The Holy Spirit visited me in a supernatural way. Of course, the Holy Spirit is always within you. He rises up. And what God has produced in the heavens comes to you. It's a download from heaven. The plan of God. And it was like a lightning hitting me. And I could see the whole future. God doesn't take hours to reveal his plan to you. He just needs a millisecond. And it will talk about what he is going to do for ages together. You can understand it in a moment. That's the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge. And he told me what I should do. And very clearly, I had the plan laid out. The Lord said, my son... Here afterwards, it's no more going to be the great greats who are going to bring the revivals. It's no more going to be Billy Grahams. It is no more going to be people whom I have used in the healing ministry. They will all die down. They will all die down. It will be sons and daughters who will prophesy. Everywhere I will raise sons and daughters. And especially he told me this. Women, he told me this. He said, the Samaritan women, the Mary Magdalene's will be raised from villages to cities to towns and countries to bring my power to the nations. God is going to use the women in a supernatural way. 
in a glorious way, in a supernatural, wonder-working way. This is what the Lord told me in 2008. And so he said, raise the sons and daughters. And we have raised about 40,000 people now to carry the power of God. And they are used in the ministry and in the churches and so on. So it continues. So God gives the vision. God tells you how you should go forward. And it is the sign from God. The sign is not you yourself saying, I am the man of God, I am the woman of God. I am here to do exploits. But it is the sign to do what God has chosen you to do. Because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Because of his resurrection power. So, God needs every one of us. And he has a plan for every one of us. And he allows us to go through the cross before the glory comes. Before the power of God comes in a supernatural way. Everyone has a unique gift. Everyone has a unique calling. You are a sign. You are a wonder. Your children are a sign. Your children are a wonder. So do not be afraid. The devil need not question us. The Lord has ordained it. Let us walk into it with all joy today in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places. Let's not ask for anybody's opinion. Let's not listen to the opinion of the devil. Let's not op- listen to the opinion of our own heart. Because God has ordained it. Jesus said, I will rise again. I will rise again. I will fulfill my part on the cross and I will rise again. This is my mission. Even today you have a mission. You will rise again. The Lord says you will rise again. Do not be afraid. And the Lord is with you to show his sign, his wonders in your life. To place you where God wants you to be placed. To touch millions of people. A little one shall become a thousand. A small one shall become a mighty nation. Each one of you shall become a thousand. Your children shall become a thousand. Your children shall not leave the Lord. They shall not go away from the calling of God. God is bringing them back. God is bringing them into his mission. God is bringing them into his vision. They shall see that you are the sign. Today, by the grace of God, all our children are in the ministry. I'm so sorry I didn't introduce them. My wife, Evangeline. We've been married for 35 years. And we have three beautiful children. Samuel, whom you saw last time, is married. Please be seated. He's married to Dr. Shilpa, and he has a daughter, Caitlin, and our second child, Sharon Angel Dinakaran. She's a Californian. She lives in LA, and she has her own media business, and uh, speaks in various platforms. I'm so proud of her. She's full of the Holy Spirit. And we have one more daughter, Stella Ramola, who just got married five months ago, or seven months ago. And her husband is a pastor's son, a worship leader, and they are used mightily by God across the nation of India. So, it's a great blessing. Today I shed tears and thank God for this grace. That all of us are used by God as a sign and a wonder. Every time we went through calamity, we knew that it was a sign for us to rise up. My sister Angel died in a cruel car accident at the age of 17. But it is then the Lord made us establish a university 
Today we have 8,000 residential students studying engineering, agriculture, media, and so on, management, and so on. And they are going out as Daniels and Josephs in the country of India. As Esthers too, with the power of God. Yes, we went through destruction. Destruction. And the devil said, you are finished. But God said, that is the sign that you will rise up. You will rise up. You will rise up. You will rise up. Do you believe that? Yes. Shall we sing together? Yes. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry. Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Raged, take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden? Come, but with a load of care. Precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou will find a solace there. Thou will find a solace there. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your bosom. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. There's one more high place I want to talk about. It's the next verse. In Matthew 4 and verse 8. Again, the devil doesn't leave us. It says, again the devil took him to a very high mountain. Would you all say very high mountain? Yes. Not a mountain, not a high mountain, but a very high mountain. So... And showed him all the kingdoms of the world. All the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you if you bow down and worship me. If you bow down and worship me. So another temptation in the highest places. Worship me. 
and I will give you all the kingdom, all the splendor, all the possessions of the world. I will give you everything of the world. Of course, Jesus said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. During the same time when my father's lungs was burning and his lungs failed, Satan appeared to him before Jesus came. And Satan said, Denakaran, you gave your life to this Jesus. But what has he done with your life? He allowed only poverty to come to you. Your relatives are accusing you. And you have no friends in the world. And today you are dying. Your heart is, your lungs are burning. Why do you want to follow this Jesus? Tell me. Just tell me that you will serve me. I will give you supernatural power. I will make you my prophet. Because the devil is also in search of faithful people. So, he said, I will do everything. And I will remove the sickness. I will provide all the finances. I will make kings come and bow before you. And money will come and fall at your feet. And you will have all the honor in the world. My father said that was the greatest temptation anybody could ever have. It was not easy. It was not easy. And he said, at that moment of weakness, you know, when he tempts you, he speaks so sweetly. Satan is so beautiful. He's not rough and tough and black and dark and he doesn't have horns. He doesn't have a big tongue. He's Lucifer. He's so beautiful. So beautiful. And he can tempt anyone. That's why everyone falls into his trap so easily. And it was at that moment of weakness. Thank God for, our, for the Holy Spirit who helps us in our weaknesses. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. But for him, we'll be easily tempted. On the other side, the Holy Spirit showed him a person carrying the cross, bleeding, full of love, full of love. Full of love. Making no promises. But giving himself for him. All of himself to him. And the Holy Spirit strengthened him. And my father said, Satan, whatever you say is so beautiful. But you never gave your life for me. Only Jesus gave his life for me. Only Jesus gave his life for me. I can trust him. I can trust him. How can I trust you? You never gave your life for me. And Satan bowed. And Jesus came. My friend, many times Satan brings his plans into our lives. In the high places. He lifts you up. And you think, I'm doing well. I'm doing the right thing. I'm at the top of the world. Now I can make decisions. And God will confirm what I do. Many times we do that. We stop praying. We stop fasting. We stop humbling ourselves. Of course, this message includes me. I too need it. The Holy Spirit showed me this this morning. That's why many fall from glory. Many fall from glory. It's easy to rise up to high places because of the grace of God. Because of the calling. Because of his choosing. God chooses the most unworthy persons. But when we get there, do we stay in that high place? Or we fall? We fall. The deceptions of the devil. He says, Paul, you can have everything. You are on the top of the world. But Satan, but Jesus said, 
away from me, Satan. Away from me. And how did Jesus survive? Every morning, early in the morning, he went to his father. He went to his father and said, Daddy, tell me whom I should heal today. What I should do today. The father would say, people will come to you. Don't send them without feeding them. I will provide the food. I will provide the food. As we run the ministry, the Lord will give us great projects, but there'll be no money. Well, there'll be no people to support us. And everyone who has donated before will be busy with their own projects or they themselves would have been afflicted. But God would say, do this. Establish the prayer tower in this place. He would tell me that. And I would look for people. Nobody will be there. Look for money. It will not be there. That's why today I have stopped looking at the bank balance. I have stopped looking for people. When Jesus says something, get into the boat and go forward. Get into the boat and go forward. The Lord told me, when my father passed away, we had huge amounts of debt, millions of dollars worth of debt in the university, in the ministry. My father was pleading with the Lord in his deathbed. Lord, give me some more time. I want to remove all this debt somehow. And I want to leave a debt-free account for my son. Until then, give me some more years. This was his prayer. He would cry and say this. He would tell the servants of God, ask the Lord to give me a little more life, some more life, so that I can leave a debt-free account to my son. But it never happened. But after my father left, every morning, three o'clock, the Lord would wake me up. Exactly at three o'clock. I was not an early person at all. <laughs> God loves the 3 a.m. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. And when 3 o'clock would come, a great fear would grip my soul. I would wake up in fear. Fear about something, unknown fear. Because God knows that's the best alarm for us. And when I would get up, of course, I'd first read the scripture. And when you start reading the scripture, the fear goes away. The word of God takes it away. And in the middle, in between reading the scriptures, the Holy Spirit would start downloading what I would have to do that day. Very clearly I would know what I should do in the ministry. Where I should start a prayer tower. And what I should do in the university. The Lord told me, start Four verticals in the university. In food, in water, in sustainable energy, and in health care. Very clearly. And then the university will boom. Bring the best of professors in these areas. Start research and bring out products. Bring out projects. And align with other universities of the world. Very clearly every morning he would tell me. He would not tell all this in one package. God always speaks only small things that you could do. He doesn't let you do, uh, He doesn't reveal the whole picture. He always leads you step by step. So continuity is so important. Every day's connection is so important. Otherwise you miss that day's revelation. And the Lord told me, establish a prayer tower in Delhi to pray 24 hours for the nation before the seat of power. I said, I'm in debt but he tells me, establish the prayer tower in Delhi, New Delhi, next to the seat of power. And you know, when God speaks, he gives you faith. So immediately at four o'clock or so, I typed out an email to the chief minister, who is the governor of the state. And I said, the Lord has spoken to me to pray 24 hours for the nation. So we have to have this prayer tower in New Delhi next to the seat of power. Give me a place in central Delhi. She's not a Christian. And I had prayed for her before the elections. So 
she sent me a message in two days' time. And she said, Dr. Paul, there is, I appreciate prayer. I appreciate what you do. I appreciate the power of your prayer. But there is no place in Central Delhi. I'll give you a place in West Delhi. But I said, this is where the Lord wants. In Central Delhi, there will be a donkey waiting for me. The donkey is already there. I have to only untie it and establish the prayer tower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, the ne- and the same day in the evening at 5 o'clock, my director called and said, we have found a place next to the parliament of India. And they are building the fifth floor of a building. Come and see the place. I went and stood there on the concrete. I saw the parliament just across, across the road. So near, direct. And I asked them, give me this place. They said, this is not for sale. We are building it for ourselves. Then I told them how Jesus spoke to me. And they were convinced. And they gave it to me to establish the prayer tower. Of course, of course, we had to pay a huge price. And we are in debt. And I announced it to the nation through the television programs. And in six months' time in the history of our ministry, which you have never seen, the money came. Exactly what we needed. And we got it debt-free. And the moment we gave the check, Jesus spoke to me again. Three o'clock in the morning, next morning. He never stops. He's always with you. Speaking to you. He said, my son, next Israel. My God. Israel. I said, I have let my faith go loose and Delhi is established. Now Israel, I, and we do not go outside India at all. Our heart is India, India, India. I said, Lord, if I do something outside India, what will happen to India? He said, I know what to do in India. There are thousands of my servants here. I will take care. I know whom to use, how to use, what to do. You just obey me. Obey me. Obey me and you will survive. And I didn't know how to get to Israel. And in two days time, I get an email from an unknown person, a Jewish person, saying, we would like to connect you with Ben Gurion University in the Negev in Israel for water research with your university. How beautifully the Lord had spoken to me to have research in water, in food, in energy, and in healthcare. And Israel is the top country for all the four. I had put it in the website, in Google, and so on. Somebody had watched it. And there I was with my family traveling to Israel. Everybody wanted to come because it was Israel. So I left them in the hotel and I went to sign. And we signed the president of the university. It's a state university. It's not a private university. It's a huge university. And Nobel laureates have come out of that university. And the president said, Mr. Dinakran, how do we know you? I said, that was the first question I wanted to ask. How do you know me, our university? He said, that's all right. Anyway, we have signed. Let's go ahead. And historic project started. And today, we have signed with eight top Israel universities. And our university is working with, in collaboration with them, Technion University, Hebrew University, bar University, and so on. So the best universities. And the whole culture of our university has changed. And we are in the Times ranking now, in the first 400, the first 500 universities of the world through all this. And in one and a half years' time, the Lord brought us totally out of debt. When you bless Israel, God blesses whatever you do. And from Israel, of course, I didn't tell you the whole story. 
when I came back to the hotel, the Lord told me, Paul, what are you doing here? Go and establish my prayer tower. And here I am in debt. You can't take money out of India to any other country. And, of course, a person whom I had never met came to me. One Mr. Samuel Smaja, he runs a big travel agency there. And he said, are you Mr. Dinakran's son? I said, yes. He said, your father has prophesied over me several years ago. When I came to India. And through that, of course, I had another connection. And he led us to a property. It is in the center of Jerusalem. On Ben Yehuda Street. In the 20th floor of the tallest building in Jerusalem. And when my wife and I went there, it was, the top floor was all broken down. And the agent said, nobody is able to get this place. Maybe it is destined for you to get it. Here we are paupers with nothing in our hands. They thought we are Indian Maharajas with Lord of Diamonds. <laughs> but he said, we will get it. But I never asked what is the price. So I leave it to my officers to do that now. I never look at the bank account also. That's, my, that's how God has been leading us in the ministry all these years. My vision is to obey God. Obey Him. Obey Him. Obey Him. Announce to the world, even though there's... I do not know whether there's money or not, whether there are people or not. Tell what Jesus asked us to do. And God honors us and perfects everything. And amazingly, because of the university connection, the government of India allowed us to have this property in Jerusalem. And we could buy it debt free in Jerusalem, which is history, which is history. And whatever you support, God multiplies it. God multiplies it and establishes his kingdom. So do not be afraid. The devil need not give us anything in this world because our daddy knows when to give. As we obey, as we obey, as we obey, he will take us to high places. And because of praying for the nation, the nation opened up. Every national party opened its doors for us to have crusades in every state. The government gave us all support. It doesn't matter which party rules. And hundreds of thousands came, have started coming. And the prime minister opened his doors to me. And the first question he asked me was, Mr. Dinakaran, how do you get the crowds that you get? How do you get the crowds that you get? I told him, there's one secret, sir. It's all Jesus. They come to see Jesus. They come to see Jesus. And it is he and only he who can wipe away the tears of all people. He is the only solution for India. He is the only solution for India. He has opened his doors to me every time I ask to see him. Three times I've seen him. Half an hour he would spend time with me. And every leader of every state. And the government would open its doors for us to bring the message of hope. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. God is taking you to that high place. Not for you to be tempted and to fall, but to be more than a conqueror. To establish the kingdom of God. And to have plenty in everything. For all his plans and promises to come true. He will cause you to ride in triumph in the heights of the land. He will cause you to ride with triumph in the heights of the land. He will give you the inheritance of the Father. And he will make you find joy in the Lord. Joy in the Lord. Do not be afraid, my friends. The Lord who has called you is faithful. He is faithful. He has paid the price. It is for us to just carry the cross 
deny ourselves daily, hear his voice and follow him. And follow him. Follow him. Do not be afraid. I'm going to invite my wife, Sister Evangeline, to come and pray that all the plans that God has given you will be fulfilled. God has given her a special gift to bring healing to the people. And I pray God will heal everything in your heart, in your family, in your life. Even as we look up to God. Can I kindly request those who can stand to stand with us in the presence of God. As Jesus is here. Jesus is here. I need not ask what time will bring While to my Savior's hand I cling A song of trust my soul can sing For step by step He will lead me I need not fear, though dark the way, for Jesus close to me doth stay. Until the dawn of perfect day, still step by step He will lead me. Step by step to the glory land My Savior guides with a loving hand I go to dwell with a blood-washed band And step by step He will lead me before my wife prays, the Holy Spirit tells me that He has given you many projects. Some of you have been given many plans, but you have travailed over it. You have struggled over it. You have looked for signs in the world. But God says, He is your sign. He will go before you. He will make the crooked path straight. He has planted everything for you. Go ahead. Rise up and go ahead. Rise up and go ahead. The Lord is going before you. The Lord will perfect everything concerning you. Concerning you. Even there's somebody who has to take a medical decision. The Holy Spirit says, go ahead. The Lord will perfect everything. His hand shall perfect everything and you will live. The Holy Spirit's grace is coming upon you right now. The Lord's grace through the Holy Spirit is coming upon you right now. The grace of God to hold you, to strengthen you, and to make His face to shine upon you, shine upon you, is coming upon you. You shall see his face. You shall see his light leading you into the plans that he has for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord, for the word that you have given us to bless us, to be with us, Lord to give us the joy of the Holy Spirit. Shall we all lift up our voices and praise God for all that He had done all these days. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. More than everything, He had been with us. He had been with us. Whenever we called upon the Lord, He had been with us. He had given guidance and supernatural, supernatural visitations. And he had been encouraging us, encouraging us. 
may this grace increase in the days to come increase in the days to come father help your children lord help them lord jesus the lord says do not be afraid for i am with you for i am with you i will help you i will uphold you with my righteous right hand thank you lord jesus thank you lord father you are your children's very present help lord very present help in times of trouble lord they might have heard voices from all sides but then you are the only one who can help your children lord help them lord to lead them in the right way in the right way lord help them not to listen to any voice from outside of you lord father but then only you lord jesus let them hear only your voice lord your voice lord every day when they would be waiting upon you lord help them to listen to you lord to listen to your still sweet voice father speak to them every day lord lord i know many are longing for your voice for them to listen lord father speak to them from now on speak to them lord very audibly audibly let your children listen to your voice lord jesus let this grace come upon your children from now on thank you lord father thank you lord thank you lord for you are pouring out this grace upon your children to lead them step by step lord step by step lord you are the one who wakes your children every morning to listen to your word lord wake them up in the morning and enable them to listen to you every day lord every day lord father pour out your pour out such a grace upon your children lord such a grace upon your children father you had been speaking to us the dinakrans every day and you had been leading us beautifully lord till this day father lord father give us also this grace more in the days to come father lord let your children be anointed in a fresh way even today lord even today let your anointing special anointing come upon your children right now shall we all lift up our hands and praise god and thank god for the new grace that is coming upon you new grace that is coming upon you thank you lord jesus the lord had given us the grace of our father dinakran and the lord had been leading us may the grace come upon your children also lord may the grace of listening to your voice come upon your children also lord fill them lord jesus fill them with your power fill them with the spirit of wisdom lord with the spirit of knowledge lord father to know everything that you have in secret oh god speak to them lord jesus speak to them lord and make them a prophet and a prophet is lord to know everything that you have lord jesus for they must to lead a successful life father fill them lord fill them lord with such anointing lord thank you lord thank you lord jesus shall we all open our mouths and thank god thank you lord thank you lord jesus for this fresh anointing that your children are having right now right now fill them lord jesus fill them with such a grace lord fill them with your mighty anointing lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord let heaven be open for them lord jesus let help them to ride in high places 
high places high places by holding your hands lord by holding on to your hand thank you lord thank you lord jesus some are feeling so weak in your spirit father lift those children of yours lord lift them up lord lift them up master lord you are the one who keeps your eyes upon them and lead leads them lord lead them lord master lead them lord lead them master lord father let them not be put down by people lord lord master lift their spirits even now lift their spirits even now master people may be discouraging them but then lord and you encourage them lord you encourage them lord jesus by filling them with a new anointing with a new anointing with a fresh anointing lord jesus must make them sit in heavenly places lord make them sit in heavenly places must father you are the god who fills us with all the spiritual blessings lord father your children are worthy to receive them lord your children are worthy to receive all the gifts of the holy spirit father let the grace abound upon your children even in this morning must father fill them lord fill them with all the grace lord fill them with all the grace thank you lord we thank you lord jesus we thank you must lord father we receive what all you have for today lord bless us lord bless us lord with your heavenly blessings with your heavenly blessings only for that your children have come here lord father fill them lord let the grace abound let the grace abound to do all the good work lord to do all good work to do every good work lord Lord Father strengthen them Lord strengthen them Lord Father let them say with Christ I can do all things with Christ's help I can do all things Father let your grace abound in them must thank you Jesus thank you Lord for blessing us with your spiritual blessings thank you Lord Father Lord must let them be led beautifully every day every day lord every day thank you lord thank you must for giving them revelations every day lord every day without fail every day let them have the revelation from you must thank you lord give them the insight Lord give them new word every day Lord the word of prophecy for them to lead their life successfully must thank you Lord thank you Lord even now i know the Lord has blessed you with his richest blessings shall we all clap our hands and thank God thank God thank God thank God thank you Lord Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you for you have come upon your children heavily oh God. Let your heavy presence be felt by your children Lord. Bless them today Lord. Bless them today Lord. Thank you Jesus. I know some of you are afflicted with sickness in your body. Wherever your sickness is put your hand upon the portion where you have sickness let the lord's right hand come upon you and heal you heal you thank you lord thank you lord for your healing presence that is here even now touch them and heal them lord lord touch the lungs that are so weak touch and heal them lord touch and heal the lungs let the lungs become new in jesus name 
be healed be healed by the power of the holy spirit thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus some are being affected in your bones father touch them and heal them lord touch them and heal their bones let them become strong in jesus name thank you lord thank you lord the heaviness in your head that that is leaving you right now be healed be healed the lord is healing you right now thank you lord thank you father all the back pain that is leaving you right now thank you jesus come on give praises to god give praises to god thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord healing miracles are happening right now be healed be healed the thyroids are leaving you right now thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord the problem in your throat is leaving you right now touch and heal them lord touch them and heal them lord jesus thank you father thank you lord some are being transformed miraculously father deliver your people lord deliver them lord and transform them master the oppressions are leaving you right now thank you lord thank you jesus thank you father you are delivering your people lord you are delivering them and healing them lord jesus thank you father we give you all the glory we give you all the glory lord you are enabling your children to ride in high places in high places in high places lift them up lord jesus to greater heights to greater heights lord to greater heights like never before let your children prosper lord give them one project after another and lord lift them up to greater heights lord bless the work of their hands lord bless their family life bless their workplaces lord bless their businesses and prosper them lord prosper your people lord thank you father thank you lord for being in the midst of us lord and blessing us with all your heart with all your heart lord bring unity in the family lord bring unity in the family let let them have understanding with each other lord with each other lord let the love increase in the family let joy increase in the family bless every family that is represented here father bless them lord bless them lord and use them as a family lord to build your kingdom thank you lord we love you jesus thank you for going with your children lord and prospering everything that you do that they do in jesus name amen god bless you